All right, everybody, welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are resuming our humankind tutorial about to move into the medieval period. So we have played through the classical era with the Morians, but we found ourselves in a situation where we have a couple of people we want to declare war on. We definitely want to declare war on the Phoenicians here. They're just not particularly powerful. It looks like they probably only have one city based off of their fame, but we also want to be able to declare war on the Nubians. So to remind you, the Nubians, their AI in particular, has a stubborn bias. This means that they're going to stay with the Nubians as they move through. You can see that the classical, they were Nubians as well. And that means that as the game progresses, they're going to stick with just one culture over and over and over again, which is going to give them a stacking bonus to their fame. If you transcend with the culture that you're currently playing with, you get a 10% fame gain bonus multiplier. So that means that this, this brown player is going to be incredibly dangerous in the late game in terms of their fame, but they're also going to be way behind when it comes to stacking legacy traits, so we want to be able to eliminate them from the competition either by vassalizing them or just conquering them outright. That's going to be one of those things that's going to be a little easier if you're playing with a militarist culture. Militarist cultures get plus 30 war support equilibrium value. Now you don't immediately pop up to that plus 30 war support, you do need to take just a little bit of time for the war support to tick up. But overall, you're going to get a lot more from any individual war if you're playing as a militarist culture. Basically, what I want to say is from a meta perspective, in the ancient, classical, or medieval period, depending on how much food you have access to, you absolutely want to declare war on at least one preferably two or three AI, beat them out, take their land, hopefully take their cities, because that's the, the biggest way to cheat on influence, even more so than playing Estite. And the Aztecs are, I think, my very favorite militarist culture. Plus two land movement speed is not only going to be really, really good when it take, comes to taking troops from our cities and deploying them on the front line, but of course marching all the way through an empire, but also very, very powerful when it comes to actual unit combat. Having extra movement speed means you can flank enemy units on any sort of field battle way more easily. And of course it's really useful even in a siege battle, even if the lines are relatively fixed, because it allows you to take some damage on units and then very quickly run them away so they can heal, and of course save you industry long term. In this case, because our food start was pretty anemic and we did not go with Harappans, I think it would have been difficult for us to declare war during the classical era, but I'm more than happy to declare war in the medieval era with the Aztecs. These guys are just fantastic. So here's, outside of the, the military considerations of medieval, something very, very important when it comes to the medieval period. Land rights are enormous. So communal land is one of these civics that gives you a huge amount of extra food. In this case, we are going to start with communal land just because we are going to be executing this war. And as I mentioned, we don't have a whole lot of food. So you do need the, the population in order to support your war front. But inherited land is kind of the one of the main reasons that influence drops off as the game goes on. On. Generally speaking, influence costs are going to increase at such a rate that it doesn't even make sense to just do oops all, all estate cultures. I've literally tried that before and, and it really just drops off very quickly after the medieval or early modern period. But land rights with inherited land allows you to claim, attach, and merge territories with money instead of influence. And because generally you're going to have a couple of AI that you're going to be trading with or ways to get extra money just by having a whole lot of merchant things or a whole lot of really good wonders that give you extra money. Inherited land is going to displace communal land as you go on, but this is one of the nice things of, of humankind if you have a whole lot of influence. You can actually cancel specific things, like here we have conscripts. We could cancel conscripts and then enact professional soldiers. We won't do that just now because we actually want conscripts in order to build our army, but if you build the army in question, like a lot of units that you need, you can then cancel conscripts, switch into professional soldiers, and get the best of both worlds. All it does is cost a whole lot of influence. So that's what we're going to do here with communal land. We're going to institute communal land, and then once we're done with our, our initial conquest and we have our money situation solved, we'll almost certainly cancel this and then switch into inherited land. When it comes to warfare, whether it's in the ancient, classical, or medieval, there are a couple of very, very important technologies. 
you do want to make sure no matter what, whenever you're fighting people, that you have access to a couple of things like organized warfare. Organized warfare allows you to use reinforcements. Organized warfare also gives you your first siege weapon. So for that reason, it's generally not that great to declare war prior to organized warfare unless you have a, an enemy nearby with absolutely no units. But as you scale up, you're also going to add some other things that make warfare a little easier to run. Siege Tactics, for instance, gets you extra unit slots for each army. And that is one of these things that as you build out an army and as you add more units to the board, you're going to need to be aware that the more units you have, the faster you can get them, the faster you can just knock competition out of, <laughs> out of existence. And that's kind of the goal when it comes to warfare. You want to leverage strengths as quickly as possible to eliminate players. Now, if you have the production and you are in a weird position with like a really big city, like for instance, if we were going to go to war with uh, the Nazca here, then it could be really, really helpful for us to plop a garrison down right along the border because that garrison can serve as a spawn point. It can serve as an opportunity for us to generate units out of that location and immediately send them to the front line, which is very, very strong, right? Anytime you can save on movement speed in humankind, it is very nice, and that's one of the many reasons that I love the Aztecs so much. Uh, movement speed is king, both in battle as well as on the, the strategic layer, but garrisons do a pretty good job of, of representing movement speed if you're, if you're positioned for it. So now we have 80 war support. That means that we can declare war on the Romans, and in this case, they're already at war with the, uh, the Nubians, which is a little scary because it means that the AI might try to surrender to the Nubians rather than to us. If they do that and they become a vassal, then it's not like the end of the world because we will declare war on the Nubians sooner rather than later. But it's one of those things that kind of the diplomatic situation determines a lot about how you need to develop in, in the game in humankind. You want to take out empires when they're weak. And in this case, if we can take the city rather than just making them a vassal, because it sure does does look like they are a, a one city miner over here. It, it, it is worth doing. And of course here we also have a very, very, very high food city in Pataliputra just due to the access that we've given them to in, in terms of their outposts. So we can actually click iron reserves that'll draft the uh, entire population of Pataliputra into these citizen units. But the citizens are still useful. They save us a lot of time in terms of, of generating industry. And of course the citizens can be upgraded. You see here that they have that little upgrade arrow so the citizens can upgrade into spearmen so if you're fighting against an enemy with a lot of cavalry then they are very very nice but even if you aren't fighting against AI with a lot of cavalry, just having more units is generally useful. We're gonna go ahead and just assault right away. We don't have the siege weapons that we need in order to get great value here. I'm gonna go ahead and do instant resolution even though it does cost us a unit. Um, just cause I think frankly at a, at a certain point you don't need to be doing manual battles. But if you really wanted to juice it and do a manual battle here, we could show off the, the strength of having extra movement speed but I'd rather do that in a, a fight that's a little more dramatic than this one. But we did get to eliminate eight units from uh, the Phoenicians there, and that's a huge deal. Eight units eliminated, of course, is gonna dramatically decrease their war support, and because we're gonna be occupying their city, that's gonna make it a little easier for us to win this war. Now, in the event that you're conducting a long-scale war against uh, multiple fronts, you do want to have money. Money is going to allow you to heal units in friendly territories for just a little bit of cash and therefore keep the, the gas going when it comes to your, your aggression here. And we are going to want to be as aggressive as possible, especially because the Nubians are going to be a big problem if we just let them sit around long term. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and declare war on the Nubians, despite the fact that we are going to be fighting a two front war. Now, the reason that this is going to be so helpful for us is that they are already also at war with our uh, friends, the Nazca, but we also just have like we have so many units that we can just march straight into their territory, and because we did a very good job at prioritizing our military growth here with the Aztecs, we're gonna be able to move our units 
onto the front very, very, very quickly. Ah, so here we're actually having a civics backlash. So we did already conscript just a whole lot of units and save a ton of industry on said units because of our, our current civics. And now we're getting an opportunity to switch into extra combat strength. Extra combat strength is of course going to increase the amount of damage that we're doing, but also decrease the amount of damage that we're taking. So being on professional army is actually very, very good. It's just a, an expensive thing if you try to start with it. But here, I think it makes for us to just go ahead and switch over. So here's another nice thing when it comes to playing Militarist stars. You can actually get Militarist affinity points in terms of your, your era stars by attacking free cities. So here there's this free city, the Elamites, but if we can conquer Sus, not only will that allow us to seize some territory from the Nubians, slap it on there, get another city going, and therefore make use of our, our unused city cap, but it will score us extra fame. And that is something that generally you so definitely can deprioritize at the beginning, but you do need to get fame along the way and, yeah. and having a way to pick it up pretty easily by beating up free cities is, is actually very, very nice. Well, we discovered Sus and just conquered the uh, the city right away. Now, this is great for a couple of reasons. It's going to give us, A, an area to resupply and heal when it comes to trying to conquer Kerma, which is, of course, our, our long-term goal. If we can capture this, the capital of the Nubians, that'll take them back to the Stone Age. Whether or not they survive, we'll probably come back for a second war in the future if we need to. But just taking more territory and being able to, to knock them down is really, really good. Uh, I see. So the AI actually wasn't like really cheating. They actually declared war on uh, these these Phoenicians slash Romans because they set up another city all the way over here, right next to the Nubian capital. Well, that that makes me feel a little better. It's not like we're getting super duper cheesed. It's just the AI being ridiculously aggressive when it comes to their settling. Which you know, name a combination more uh, on theme here in in a 4x game. But we are going to begin a siege of. Kerma, and we're actually going to remain in siege rather than immediately assaulting. This is going to allow us to build up a couple of trebuchets and at the same time wear down the citizen uh, militia that are defending in here. Oh man, the Nubians actually look really, really strong. So I'm scouting around and I see here this is a dashed border. That means that this is an unattached outpost. But here you can see there's a fixed border. So that means that there's going to be another Nubian city up here. So no matter what, we're going to need to be able to attack the Nubians almost certainly in a second war after this one. Um, but that's something where just position yourself well for it and you should be able to, to maximize your success chance. And on that note, we can actually click Iron Reserves yet again and get even more troops on the field and therefore help uh, screen out these, these Nubians who've decided to just start marching around in the background. So here we actually have the opportunity to ascend into the early modern era, but I'm going to delay that for two reasons. One, fame is something that you do need to start prioritizing as the game goes further and further into the game. And secondly, I think we're probably not going to stick with the militarist culture, and I would like to be able to fight multiple fights against uh, the these really annoying Nubians out here if we need to. And so being able to stick around with the Aztecs is actually pretty nice if, if you're trying to do that. So here you can see, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks when it comes to manual battling. If you can identify where reinforcements can potentially come from for the enemy, you can just station units right on top of that or potentially just right around that and therefore prevent your opponent from being able to field as many troops as they would normally be able to. This is like very, very, very important important when it comes to PvP, but not so important when it comes to player versus AI. You can kind of do whatever you want to in regards to, to player versus AI, but it is very, very critical that in any sort of PvP situation that you situate yourself to, to deny reinforcements whenever possible. And that's of course one of the one of the men, many, many, many reasons why I love the the Aztecs so much. They just have all the resources and all the stats that are good in uh, in humankind. All right, so in this case, we've actually managed to hold their flag. And by capturing the flag here during the siege, we are going to win this battle pretty quickly. We just need to endure a couple of rounds of attack from the AI. 
but be aware that uh, cavalry units actually can't move into cities or even really attack into cities unless they have a ranged attack. So bringing too many cavalry units is actually asking for trouble. You do want to have infantry as well as, as siege weapons if you're trying to attack a, a meaningfully powerful enemy. All right, and there it is. We've managed to defeat the Nubians inside their own territory. So here, this is like the real strength of the Aztecs, is that it allows you to just position very, very aggressively on, on any sort of map like this, It'll allow us to do some really nice flanking maneuvers, and of course, once we do some big, nice flanking maneuvers, we're gonna have some very, very quick and easy fights, on, especially on the offense, because you get to take the first action whenever you're attacking here in Humankind, and that is fantastic if you're just trying to make sure you get the best engagements possible. So here's like a really, really important technology here inside of, of Humankind. Getting Feudalism gives you crop rotation, which is plus one food on tile producing food. That is fantastic when you're trying to just grow really big cities, but it's also really important if you're just trying to do some warfare. And of course, uh, we are absolutely doing some warfare. So just paying attention to what sort of technologies give you access to more resources, especially in the early mid game, is a great way to stay strong. So here, we're just gonna take all of the territory for the Babylonians, as well as just Kirma itself. That means that we're not taking a whole lot of territory from the Nubians, but of course taking their capital is going to set them back pretty meaningfully in terms of their development, and it's going to position us really, really well to in a future war, which as I said, we are absolutely going to execute. It'll give us a, a great opportunity to follow it up and, and hopefully knock the Nubians out of meaningful contention. But unfortunately, we actually don't have enough war support here to force them to become our vassal. The cost is simply too high, and there's not enough war score there for us to execute execute that as our, our goal. But that's something that the if if you take enough wars against the same AI over and over again, you can wear them down to the point where they can become your vassal. And even if you can't, if you just defeat them enough times, their their ability to score fame is definitely going to drop off. And uh, we do want to do that. We do not want this Nubians just hanging around scoring fame forever, because then they will become impossible to defeat outside of military matters but we're gonna need our, our war support to recover. That's gonna be the the real critical thing when it comes to executing that, that second war. Now we currently are at 10 out of 21 era stars, and so that means we are in a position where we could potentially ascend, but we're two technologies away from getting the science star, we're five population away from getting this agrarian star, and unfortunately the militarist stars here inside of the early modern period, the poles, are just not that good. This is a, a really, really minimal legacy trait that you get access to, and you have to sacrifice on some really nice things when it comes to your other cultures here. And so you're gonna have to be careful as to when you ascend if you're trying to, to do some serious beatdowns. So I think our plan here is actually to hold on to the medieval era until we can get enough war support to declare war on the Nubians, and then from there, as soon as we've we've jumped into that war, we will then move on to the early modern. I'm also gonna grab yield to none, just so that way we get grievances as quickly as possible, because speed really is important. We wanna we wanna make sure that we are developing ourselves in a, a direction that makes us as strong as possible as quickly as possible. And now we're gonna hit the the really big payoff here. Hamlet allows you to build a, a district that actually exploits entirely new tiles, and therefore it's like one of the most efficient in terms of just early districts. You plop them down, they exploit a whole lot of territories all at once. But the Hamlet's value doesn't just stop there. Hamlets also add extra jobs, and if you're trying to grow your populations very, very high, you're actually gonna find that you need jobs in order to, to keep people employed, give them something to do. This here, chivalry, along with feudalism, are the two technologies from the medieval era that if you're trying to slingshot something using a scientific culture, those are generally the ones that you're gonna to aim towards. They really do give you lots and lots of extra resources, and of course, those extra resources, if you're busy trying to score points, you'll find ways to, to plow them into something useful. So just in case you end up in a position where you have like two over city cap in, in at any point in time, 
be aware that if once you hit the requisite technology here of uh, military architecture, you can actually absorb cities. This is very, very important in the event that you get a lot of like re relatively low value cities from either free cities or the AI or what have you. And so in this case, we conquered another free city, but we're actually able to attach it to Sus, the first free city that we conquered over there. That's going to be great because it gives us another outpost, but it's also going to be really helpful because it's going to reduce the influence cost that we have going on. And although running two over city cap is now something we can very easily afford. We're at plus 429, so you can have definitely a, a an extra city over city cap. You do want to be careful about whether or not it's worth it, and that city only had zero population in it, and so absorbing it there made a lot of sense. This is something that you do kind of need to get a feel for as you play the game out, but given that ooh, there's not going to be a lot of resources available to the Nubians after a couple of subsequent wars, it should be pretty easy for us to make great progress. So we are closing in on the end of the medieval era, almost certainly. We've already got our 14 out of 21 stars, but we are about to tick up to over 80 war support, which means we should be able to declare war, like actual war, not surprise war, next turn. And that's just one of those things where depending on what sort of things you get access to, you should be able to do it pretty quickly. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be able to do it super duper quickly. Like, what a turnaround. But of course, there is like that pseudo truth where your war support drops to zero after a successfully executed war. So be aware of that. But here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to declare war, lock in this extra war support from our bonus affinity star, and then we're going to go ahead and move into the early modern era. So here we actually have a couple of options that we're going to discuss in the next video. But basically, you want to make sure that no matter what's going on in terms of your development, that you're going to have the resources necessary to, to fill in the slots that are currently going badly for you and we are falling woefully behind in terms of merchant stars and we're having a little bit of difficulty with our builder and our estate stars so we'll see what we have access to in the uh, the early modern age here in humankind to to make good use of that but taking this war with the Nubians and then immediately flipping into the next era means that we should have a very easy time scoring militarist militarist stars in the next era and then from there getting some really rapid fame progress and you can see we're, we're actually keeping up almost with the nubians despite their unbelievable fame ability from uh from stubborn and once we've eliminated them from competition it should be pretty easy for us to get out ahead of everybody else all right that's uh that's walker here for humankind take care